Hey guys, welcome back. So last time we added this text box that allows the user to enter their own email address and then the reset password email will be sent to that email address. Um, what we're going to do though is prevent the uh, form from being rendered if the email was sent. Because if the email was sent, we don't want to give them the option to actually uh, submit another request. So you go back to here and all we need to do is put an exit at the bottom. So underneath this try catch right here, you can just put exit and that just means that if uh, the email is sent or not sent or rather if the form was submitted it will uh, exit and this will not be rendered exit means do not execute any more code after this point so this part will not be on the page at that point what i'm also going to do is update these messages instead of saying message has been sent i'm going to say reset password link has been sent to your email of course, you're free to use whatever you want here, but that's just what I'm going to output. So now they'll see this text instead of messages being sent. Okay, that's good. So let me explain a little bit about what's going to happen next. So the user types in their email address, and then what we're going to do is prepare an email and send it to them. Now, what's going to happen is when we want to send an email, we're going to generate some ID, some unique ID, and then what we're going to do is store that in one of our tables. And then the link that they get sent via email is going to contain this uh, ID that we generated, and then we'll use that to update the uh, email. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to open up my uh, old, my working site, I should say, the one I used to demo this right at the start of the course. So I'll click Forgot Password, and I'm going to enter my email address, courses at reesekenny.com. All right, so I'm clicking Reset Email. And what's happened is it sent this email to my inbox, okay? But what's happened behind the scenes is it's gone to one of my tables called Reset Passwords. Okay, you see this table was empty before. If I refresh it now, you're going to see uh, one row in the table. So what it's done is it's generated a unique code, and it's stored that in the table, and it's stored it with the email address too. And then the code that I get, let me just bring up my browser. So if I refresh this, and you should see the email. The code, if I click on this, You'll see it contains this code in the in the URL right here. So this is used to update the password. You see this matches the code that we have here. So it's generating a code, storing it in the table, and then I'm going. To, it's using this to update the password. So when I update my password now, it's going to go and change the uh, password value in the user table. This is a, a, a sample users table I created. Of course, you would use your own users table. But anyway, so you use the code, uh, go to this reset passwords table, find a match, and it's going to take whatever email address is there, and then go and update this user, which of course points right here. So you'll see this password is about to change in a sec. I'll just put some random password in there, click update, and if I refresh this table now, this value here should have changed, which it does. Okay, and then of course it's deleted this uh, from the reset passwords thing, so that code is no longer there. So if I try and access it again with this code, I'll press enter. I refresh the page, it said can't find page because there's this uh, code does not exist anymore, we deleted it. Once we use it to reset it, we want to get rid of it. All right, so that's just a little demo about what happens behind the scenes. What we're going to do then is uh, make a start on that. So we need two tables, we need a users table and a reset passwords table. But before we do that, we need to create a database itself. Now, if you've already got a database, like I said, if you're building this on top of some existing project of yours, you won't need to create a database, but I am going to create one because for the purpose of the demo, we're going to start with a fresh uh, database. So my database is going to be called a reset password, just because it's a test for the reset password functionality. Click create. So I've created this new database uh, and now I'm going to create a table in here. This is going to be my users table. Uh, like I said, if you have a users table already, you use that. Uh, but let me just create a test one that we're going to use for the purpose of this course. Create an ID column. I'm going to scroll across and do the auto increment checkbox. Click go. So set this as the primary key now. And this just means that uh, every time we insert a row into this table, the ID value is going to increment one by one. And we don't have to worry about that. It will do that on its own. We won't use this ID column in these tutorials, but it's always a good idea to put an ID column uh, on your tables, regardless of whether you think you need them or not. So the second column is just going to be some name column like this. Uh, again, we're not going to use this in this course, but just to give it a feel of an actual user's table, I'll create another column uh, called username. And these are of type varchar 255, by the way. So it, it stores text with a maximum of 255 characters. It doesn't matter about this. Uh, I'm just going to put it there so that it's definitely got enough characters in this column uh, for what we need. So I'll create an email column as well and just set this to varchar. Again, 255. And then I need one more column here. So I'm going to go up to here and click add one more. So click the go button and it should give me a blank column. And the last one's just going to be password like this. And of course, this is where the uh, password is going to go. And then 255 will do as well. Click save. And now we have the users table. You guys probably already have a users table, but now I have a blank one. And then just so we have something to work with, I'm going to click on the insert tab right here and just insert some value. I'll say uh, Reese Kenny username Reese123. Email is going to be courses at reesekenny.com. dot com like that. And I've spelled that wrong, so let me just fix that. So courses at reesekenny.com. 
and the password's going to be uh, anything for now. It doesn't really matter. Just put anything in there you like because we're going to update this soon anyway. So, uh, yeah, if I go back to the browse now, you should see we have this in there. Don't worry about this not being an actual password. Of course, I'm not using it to log in in these videos, just for demonstration purposes. And then, of course, we need that other table, which is that one that we use to store the code. And this is going to have uh, three columns, an ID column, because like I said, it's always good to put an ID column on and make it a primary key as well. So click go, and that's good. And then we just need a code column. Now, uh, I'm just going to put two varchar 255, just like I have the other ones, just so it definitely has enough characters in there. And the last one's going to be email, and this is how we know which user to update. You could do the user ID instead if you really wanted to, but this is, uh, this is okay. So 255, click save. Oh, I need to put a name for the table. I did forget that. So the name's going to be reset passwords table. Feel free to change the name, but that's the name I'm going to give it. Now we have two tables, all right? So user table and reset passwords table. We're not going to put anything into the reset passwords table manually. We'll do that in just a sec with our code. Okay, so what are we going to do first? Well, the very first thing we're going to do is check that the code they have attached to the URL is valid. So we're going to go to the, um, the reset passwords table and see if there's a row in this table with the code. So if I just show you again, I'll go back to here. Okay, I'll add, I forgot password. Courses at reesekenny.com. Click reset. And then if I just show you uh, what we're going to have, it's this thing right here. So we're going to check that this code exists. Because when they go to this link in their email, we want to make sure that the code they're using is a valid code. So this one right here, if I type in some, uh, wrong, some wrong code, you'll see it said can't find page. But if I go back to here with the correct code, uh, you see it should work. Okay, so all we have to do is a simple query to check that. So go back to here and we'll write our query. But just before we do that, we need to make our, our connection to the database. So let's just create a config file real quick, open a new, uh, a new file and save it as config.php. Of course, you may already have this file because you, you might have a, a site already. So feel free to use that. But I'm just going to connect to the database real quick. I'm going to say con equals my SQLI underscore connect. So this is how we connect to a database. Now I'm using procedural MySQL just so it's easier for beginners to pick up. Uh, this is the most simple form of MySQL you can do. And the focus of this course isn't on the database stuff. It's more of the functionality. So if you know PDO, for example, feel free to use that. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use procedural MySQL in this course. Okay, so the first parameter is going to be the host name, which is just local host. The second parameter is the username to your database. Now mine's just root, just the default one. The uh, password is just going to be an empty string for me because I don't have a password on my local database. And then the, uh, the last parameter is going to be the database name. Now I just called it um, reset password right here, so I'm going to use that name. So reset password. Okay, there's my connection. And then all we need to do underneath that is just do a little check to make sure it worked. We can if mysqli underscore connect underscore error no. So just checking if there are any errors. And I've spelled this wrong, so make sure you spell this correctly. mysqli underscore connect underscore error no. So if this is true, it means there were errors connecting to this database. It, maybe the name's wrong or something like that. So it could not connect. So we'll just echo failed to connect. And then after that, I'll just do a dot to append a string. And we'll just say mysqli underscore connect underscore error no like that and it will output the uh, error number and that's it give it a save go back to here and let's just include the uh, config file so I'm gonna copy one of these lines here paste it below and then change this just to config.php and that's it we should now connect to the database if I refresh this page now we should see nothing but if I just to make sure it worked if I change this to a name which doesn't exist so there's no database with this name we should see an error which we do so I'll just change it back we know it works now Okay, so we have our tables and now we have our connection to the database. We've made a good start. Now what we're going to do is actually write the query, which checks to see if the code we're using exists. Wish all the hashtags, likes and tweets will find a way to get lost. Yeah, how about I...